in my wildest dreams, I never thought that uh, we would be at the level that we are now in terms of hungry people. Uh, as Larry said, when we started uh, 17 years ago, and as we start our 18th campaign, uh, we said, wow, there's a thousand people in our area, a thousand people in our area that are, that are hungry. And uh, now that, uh, that number is probably, if you take not only the greater Brattleboro area, but some of the other communities where the campaign is being run, probably approaching 15,000 people, between 12 and 15,000, it's mind boggling. George and I had not realized how many people, our friends, neighbors, people in this community, surrounding communities, not people passing by, uh, do not have enough food to eat. How many children don't have enough food? Uh, elderly, veterans. And when you start relaying to people the numbers and how much food leaves the drop-in center, um, you can't help but get involved. People with a paycheck are frequently only one or two paychecks away from being in the same boat as the people that they are making donations to help. Here's how you can help. Online, projectfeedthethousands.org. Yes. Okay. Send the check to River Valley Credit Union or make a donation, either cash or food, or your shop. This is Tim Johnson. Look into your heart this holiday season because if you do, you'll know that you'll do the right thing and we really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Tim Johnson talking about Project Feed the Thousands, which kicks off today. A great way to uh, make a small contribution. Um, if you're at the grocery store, pick up an additional item and drop it in the bin there. Uh, easy, simple, and uh, it can go a long way. All right, next, with 545 Live's affinity for rhyming and alliteration, it's no surprise that Compassion for Fashion Weekend is headlining for us. And while compassion may be a familiar word in the fundraising arena, fashion is certainly a new twist. Tomorrow night, runway models will debut designer outfits crafted from used clothing and accessories found at hospices, thrift stores. The evening, entitled Wild Night on the Catwalk, will benefit the Brattleboro Area Hospice um, and its work to assist terminal patients and their families all while producing a spectacular night of glitz and glamour. For more, I'm going to turn it over to the woman on my left here, uh, the Deshay Show's very own Deshay Peacock. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming in to talk to us a little bit about uh, this event. Maybe Thank I can you. just get you to start off by talking about, um, you know, the benefit for hospice. What does that mean? Let's, mm -hmm. What are we really doing here with this? Benefit? So um, this, this fashion show has been in the works for about a year, but since then there was Hurricane Irene, which hit. So it's a fundraiser for the hospice. It's a nonprofit organization that helps people um, when they're dying. And it's a really wonderful thing. It's all run by volunteers. So the money goes towards the hospice. Terrific. Yeah. Um, and now we've actually got a clip. Uh, Grady Smith, a BCTV producer who's been working on this campaign as well, uh, went by the store and uh, did some interviews with folks about what hospice means to them. Let's take yeah. a look. I have been involved with hospice here in Brattleboro for about 25 years. I love hospice. I love the work they do. I love the organization. I love the shops. Um, I love how the volunteers go out and work with our clients. And it's all volunteer and the, our services are free of charge. The beauty of this community is that everyone's very interconnected and the economy sometimes becomes very localized and supports a lot of more compassionate things in the community. So I'm always very interested in supporting businesses that I know are supporting good things in the community, so I trust that. All right, welcome back. Uh, now, Deshay, so much to talk about here with this event. We've got, uh, you know, models, uh, designers, just a, a really exciting thing, and I don't even really know where to start in terms of asking you about how this all got put together, but uh, maybe we could start just a little bit with the clothes and then we'll yeah. work our way up through the whole process there. Tell us a little bit about what it's like. Yeah, I'm so, this. I'm so excited about this event. It's going to be amazing. I don't think there's been anything like this in Brattleboro, and it's really a great opportunity for people to come out and have fun and get dressed up and pull out that outfit or that dress or suit that you've had forever that you just never get a chance to wear. So it's really exciting. And about the process, it's amazing. It's, you know, the hospice is the experience goods is the name of the store that benefits the hospice. And um, they sell amazing things. You can find really cool things. So um, the designers are taking the clothes from experience goods and they're refashioning them into, you know, fancy, cool, outrageous, wild you know, outfits for the runway. So it's really cool. And there's designers, there's local designers, and there's designers from Boston, and there's New Hampshire. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be a cool event, for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and now tell us a little bit about um, 
you know, the we'll get into a little bit, and I just want to, you know, reiterate the information, mm -hmm. you know, how people can get involved. And, of course, mm -hmm. tickets are still available and also available at the door. Maybe you can just mm -hmm. give us the, the rundown on that. Yeah, so it's tomorrow night, and it's the doors open at 6.30 at the Putney Courier Center. People can get tickets um, at the stores, at either the Flat Street or the Elliott Street Experience Goods stores, or they can go on CompassionForFashion.org, and they can buy tickets right online. Tickets are $35 for standing room only, and they're $50 for a runway. So. Very cool. Yeah. Now, have you uh, gotten to see any of these? I know these outfits have been kept top secret, but you've gotten to see some of them. How do yeah. they look? Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's 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 the variety. You know, there's some evening wear, and there's this really cool dress that's made of like the woman that you just saw in the clip, Chris McDermott. She um, braids rugs, and so the top of the dress is her braided rug, and it's like this fairy motif. And um, there's a woman who made a dress out of men's white shirts. That's like a wedding dress. So yeah, it's yeah, really cool. sounds worth getting variety. Out can uh, not only help a cause, but check out some, some very cool uh, mm -hmm. fashion, very cool ideas. So, yeah. Deshay Peacock uh, joins me on the show. Um, she'll be uh, stepping out on us in a little bit to go to a final rehearsal for this. Final rehearsal tonight, uh, yeah. yeah. Putting it Busy. all together. Uh, but before we do that, um, I just want to take a, another look at a, a clip that we've got here. So uh, again, Compassion for Fashion. Uh, dot org is the website where you can find out more Wild Night on the Catwalk. Quite Get an event. Get your tickets. Get your tickets now. Get your tickets. Come. Wild Night on the Catwalk, the name of the event. Doors open tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. at the Putney School's Michael S. Courier Center. Tickets are still available and can be purchased uh, online via PayPal at CompassionForFashion.org, where you can also get directions, find prices for runway seating, and the ever-economical standing room-only tickets, see a behind-the-scenes look at the designers uh, doing their work, and more. Um, again, that's CompassionForFashion.org. You can also buy tickets and find information by calling 802-257-0775, or do it in person by stopping by Hospice, um, at 191 Canal Street or their experienced goods shop at 51 Elliott Street just past the Harmony parking lot entrance. You can also buy tickets at the door tomorrow night. All right, and with that, we'll, uh, we'll move on in the news here. Uh, OWS has upped the ante on national attention again as police have begun to evict occupiers in cities and towns across the country. Early Wednesday morning, New York City police officers armed with batons and mace descended on Zuccotti Park. Um, violently displacing people from their tents. The written notices told occupiers that they could reclaim their possessions later from the uh, sanitation department, but officers ultimately threw away camping supplies, laptops, and even donated books. Shocking videos and images have permeated the web like that of 84-year-old um, Dorley Rainey, uh, maced by police in Seattle. Yesterday, protesters again gathered throughout the day in an attempt to shut down the New York Stock, Exch Stock Exchange. The occupiers emphasized that they were not trying to inconvenience the 99%. Despite the drama, the Stock Exchange did open on time. Now, uh, just a frenzy of uh, media going on here. And uh, again, it was really left up to the world of citizen journalism uh, to, to put this together as a lot of media networks were not initially on the scene. Of course, um, when you punch it in on YouTube, there are, are just um, so many uh, videos of um, what's going on, not just in New York, but uh, places around the country. Um, but there's also now a series of live streams as well coming in from all sorts of places across the country using the technology live stream, which we use to do our webcast Wednesdays. Um, you can check out livestream.com slash OccupyNYC where they've got live, uh, you know, people that have been looking at photos or even down in New York, say the Brooklyn Bridge, um, which uh, has just been overrun by uh, people supporting the movement. It's been quite a thing to see. Again, livestream.com, Occupy NYC. Um, that's where we're looking now. Uh, a whole new world of uh, live streaming information coming in and a great way to uh, get involved.
All right. Um, the next piece of that, of course, the local connection here is that last night residents of Brattleboro held a candlelit vigil at the Wells Fountain across the street in solidarity with the wounded masses from across the nation. I was there along with my senior news correspondent Joe Bushy and BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyes. Here we are at the Wells Fountain in Brattleboro. It's Thursday evening, the 17th of November, and a bunch of folks have gathered here in solidarity with the Occupy Wall Street movement. Some folks here holding up candles and thinking about uh, what's happening on Wall Street. Well, today is the another global day of action. Yep. So around the world, people are holding demonstrations, and we know that on Wall Street today, the the goal was to shut down Wall Street and then to occupy the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm -hmm. So we're here standing in solidarity with what's happening in other parts of the country. I see that society is changing and I want to see it change in a positive direction. It's all gratuitous. It doesn't have to happen. The elites could spend a quarter of the money they've spent on all this horrible infrastructure just on jobs and making things work for people. I think it's just important to have people coming out. Yep. So more than like for solidarity purposes for them to recognize us, it's about us recognizing our own position here as members of this community yep. and that there are still issues regardless of you know whether we have big corporations lobbying for our, our rights or not. There are still um, issues that haven't been needs that haven't been met in this community in terms of housing especially, um, health care issues, local food sovereignty and just food access in general. So it's good to have people coming out and recognizing that we are part of the national and international movement even though the threat may not be so imminent. And with that, it's time to jump into our weekend calendar. That means a little dart-throwing animation here. We'll start the calendar off with the Development Review Board meeting, which is going to be uh, Monday at 7 p.m. in this uh, here 230 Main Street Municipal Center, just north of the library on Putney Road. It's going to be shown live on BCTV Channel 8 um, at, uh, well, 7 p.m. The uh, Housing Authority has asked for a continuance and will not, uh, that topic won't be discussed at the meeting. For more, to put it more eloquently than I just did, we uh, spoke with the Planning Department's Sue Fillion about the upcoming meeting. The Development Review Board will be meeting on Monday, November 21st at 7 o'clock in the Select Board Meeting Room. Um, what once promised to be a busy agenda with eight applications um, has kind of slimmed down a little bit. There's been several requests for continuance, um, probably of, of interest to a lot of people is the Brattleboro Housing Authority, um, a continuation from the November 7th meeting where they're appealing the determination of substantial damage. Um, they have submitted a request to continue the hearing, and that will now be heard on the, at the dis Monday, December 5th uh, DRB hearing. And representatives from BHA and the town um, will not be speaking to that appeal uh, this coming Monday. All right, we're running out of time here. Uh, so for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden, and I'm going to just do what I always do around this time and say good night, everybody.